Welcome to our show, The Sound of the Trumpet. I'm your host, Faith Marie Batsko, bringing you critical insight and revelation to position you securely in Christ for the season ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on our podcast, The Sound of the Trumpet. Today, I have a very important message to share on our current situation in the world and on the year 2022. The title of today's message is 2022 All Aboard. In January of 2020, during a time of worship, I received a vision of myself standing in a boat in the middle of the ocean with my hands raised in joyful worship in the middle of a great storm. I then heard the words of the song, Raise a Hallelujah, in the middle of the storm, you will hear our praises roar. The Lord then spoke to me and said that this was to be my posture for 2020, that the uh, storms would come, but I was to continue to stay in that place of worship and adoration and praise. At that time, I didn't know what was coming in 2022, but through that very trying year, praise and worship was what sustained me through it all. Recently, as I was seeking the Lord for direction for 2022 and the next steps of the journey ahead, I became overwhelmed by His presence and saw again a picture of a dark, stormy sky However, this time I saw Jesus standing in a small boat in the middle of the ocean, beckoning me to get in. At first, I was somewhat confused as I remembered the first vision of 2020, and because in Scripture, Jesus stands on the water beckoning Peter. He wasn't in a boat. The words of the song, Oceans, then penetrated my thoughts. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown where feet may fail. I was sensing that God was calling me to get into the boat with him on a journey into that great unknown, but that his sovereign hand would be my guide. I sensed that the Lord was saying that what lay before us, though unknown, was already secured in him. The body of Christ was launching out with him on the beginning of a most notable journey where he alone controlled the oars. He leads the way, and his sovereign hand would be our guide. We are moving into a remarkable season of fulfilled destinies and inheritances received to stand as unshakable pillars of strength during a time of great shaking and great awakening. The Lord directed me to fast and to draw close to become anchored and deeply rooted in Him for the year ahead. The great birthing of our call and the seeds God has implanted within us is about to occur. And a divine intervention is coming to empower us and to break us into this historic time as we are powerless to produce the promises and the will of God. Jesus' ministry was launched out of the wilderness. After a 40-day fast, he came out filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe God is calling his body to a time of fasting and praying in the month of December. Yes, I know, it's usually a time of feasting, but you can do you know, whatever type of fast you feel God is leading you to do. The times before us are somber. And it has become important for us to dig down deep to get to the river of God. That is the source of our peace, as His peace will guard our hearts. And it is the source of our joy, as the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to draw close to Him in this time and receive our strength to become deeply rooted and anchored, grounded in Him. We are clearly living in a time of government manipulation, great deception, and propaganda that will now be ramping up to another level in 2022, a time when great discernment and wisdom will be required of us. In the times of inflation, lack, 
and maybe for some, even famine, God will be our supply, brought to us through the supply chain of the angel armies of heaven. God is well able to prosper us in times of famine, as he did Isaac. And that account is in Genesis 26, 12, where in that time of famine, it says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. One of the mighty moves of God that is about to be birthed is the harvest. And the harvest is the end of the age according to scripture. The shaking that is coming will shake loose the great harvest that is now ripe and ready from its iniquitous moorings. Much opportunity and power will be given to be witnesses of the great love and compassion of our God, accompanied with signs, wonders, and miracles. The Word of God says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. We will see the power of the gospel released in supernatural, miraculous ways to bring forth revival and awakening as we have never seen before. The Lord has shown me that we are in a time of great birthing, birthing the mighty things of God for this season of history. In regard to the amniotic sac that protects and holds a baby in its mother's womb, I've been seeing the word sac in all capital letters. God then showed me that it was his acronym for a strategic apostolic command that holds the will of God for this hour of history. The earth is in a great travail that is about to bring forth a revelation of the Son of God. And the sons of God are in travail to birth the mighty moves of God, to prepare the Lord's way in revival and awakening that is charting the course for his future return. The breaker anointing coming upon God's present frontline apostolic leaders will break the sack carrying the mighty, awesome strategies for the completion of God's will for the end of this age. These are leaders who have died to their desire to be the leader, to control, to be the apostle or prophet, or to be the one with the word. The sack breaks when pressure is placed on it from the head of the child. The volatility rising across the urge from raging storms is causing the pressure within the sack to birth the will of God. The breaker anointing rests on the head, according to Micah 2.13, which says the breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them, and the Lord on the head of them. Things are coming to a head, the Lord's head. A divine intervention is needed to empower us and break us into this historic time. When an anointed leadership is ready and the sack breaks, the former and the latter reigns of revival will converge and merge releasing the river of God to rush and gush forth over the earth as the waters covers the sea. Out of the womb of the sack will break forth the waters of revival. With arms embraced and locked in purpose, rivers of living water are about to break forth from Canada and the United States over North America and into the world. God is about to show up in power and glory to shock the world awake with his majesty, his love, and his great power. The Lord showed me that December was a time to position ourselves in the birthing posture. The body of Christ has been praying, interceding, and travailing for two years over 2020 and 2021. I believe that we're about to see God move in the third year. In 2022, the Holy Spirit will break out to raise and release the bride in resurrection glory as she leaves her dressing room. 
In order to break forth into the birthing of this new season, the Lord dropped the word cohesive into my heart. He said his body must become cohesive. The definition of the word cohesive is the action of forming into a united whole. God showed me that each of us individually was powerful in our own right. We're all anointed, gifted, and called. However, the Lord stressed that this was not sufficient to serve him for the challenges of these times. We must become a united whole in our movements, churches, and ministries, a body in one accord, wherever that is possible. As many are meeting right now and gathering in small groups, large groups in their churches, we must become a united whole. The commanded blessing shall be released upon gatherings that are in one accord to birth the will of God, not our will, not our agenda, but the will of God for this season ahead. The church has always struggled with becoming united in the purposes of God as flesh and agendas and issues get in the way. I sense God is now saying that it is time to get rid of our idiosyncrasies as the time is now and the time is short. After the fall feast of 2021, we shifted, I believe, into a Kairos appointed time and God began trumpeting the call to get ourselves ready and to board his train. I keep hearing the shout, all aboard. That is now coming in urgency in December. The glory train is preparing to depart from the station, the church building. The people of God are being moved to step out into the marketplace into the purposes of God, into new dynamics and structures that he is forming to face the challenges of this time. Those trying to bring back the old ways and the old structures need to get on board. Things are moving at an accelerated pace and God has given us much time to get prepared and positioned, to get fully on board with his will and his word and the movements of the wind of the Holy Spirit. Storm clouds are presently brewing. Israel is preparing its people and mobilizing for war with Iran. Russia is mobilizing over 100,000 troops and tanks at the border of Ukraine. And China is making threatening flyovers over Taiwan. The drumbeat of war is sounding. In the seven letters to the Ecclesia in Revelations, in the book of Revelations, Jesus admonishes his people to become overcomers for the times of trouble. The book of Revelation is the uncovering and the revelation of Christ in all his power and glory. Revelation 12 has been mistakenly taught to be the birth of Christ it is actually the birth of the sons of God in union with the Son of God as the ruling authority for the times. Verse 5 describes the travail of the woman as giving birth to a man-child that will rule with a rod of iron. The Greek word for man is uios, and it means a mature son. This verse is quoted four times in scripture, three times in the book of Revelations, and once in the Old Testament in Psalms chapter two, verse nine, where it originates, spoken by the Father to the Son. I believe that this is the chief reason it has been taught that the birth of the man-child is the birth of Christ as it is a prophecy of Jesus. It says in Psalms 2 9, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them to pieces with a potter's vessel, like a potter's vessel. 
However, Jesus himself decrees this very same prophecy about him. He decrees it over the overcoming saints of his ecclesia, that they may receive it just as he has received it from his father. That's in Revelations 2, verses 26 to 28, where he says, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. Ruling with the fullness of this level of authority comes with the understanding of the necessity of an authentic union with Israel through Christ, whose feet and head are forever positioned in Jerusalem. This is in Ezekiel 43 verse 7 where he says, This is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. Please check out my free online course for the cause of Zion, a revelation God gave me specifically for these times. We are now being called to come to attention, to be secured and anchored, to gather, to mobilize, and to prepare, to travail in intercession, to rule with Christ over the demonic winds and storms now swirling over the nations. It's time to be rooted and grounded in the truth of God's word and the revelations that he's giving us for these times. This is not a time to be proud or arrogant or stubborn or rebellious. This is a time that we must lay all of that down, come together as a body united to stand in strength against the things that are coming upon the church, the people of God, and the world. We cannot afford to assume and presume that we know everything. We need to be humble in heart and have our ears and hearts opened to receive from God all that he has prepared for us to get us through the challenges of the next days ahead. So Lord, I pray for everyone listening to this uh, podcast. I pray, Father, that your mercy will just cover them like a blanket, that your love would just wrap itself around them, Lord, and constrain them in your will and in your purposes, Lord, that they will have ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to be open to receive, that they will be securely positioned in a place of humility, Lord, to hear your word and to prepare with understanding. Lord, bless them, keep them. Lord, may your face shine upon them. Let your glory, your weighty glory rest upon them. Lord, I'm asking that you will put a wall of fire around your people. Lord, that you will hold our hands, that your sovereign hand will be our guide in all that we do, wherever we go. And we just bless you today and thank you, Lord, that you are our God and you are our friend and we can trust and rely upon you to navigate us through the challenges of these days ahead. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Help us to get these words out to the body of Christ to rally the troops and those serving the Lord on the front lines. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes and cpnshows.com. And please like and share with your friends. See the links below to our website and our social media pages. God bless you and keep you safe and hidden within him.